Hey, everybody. Welcome to Text Request Talks, where we talk with business leaders about how they get stuff done. Uh, presented by Text Request, the business text messaging platform that lets you text from your office phone numbers. so You can stop making phone calls and start actually getting responses. Learn more at textrequest.com. I'm Kenneth Burke, and today we're talking with Luke Hancock, who's the marketing manager for Been There, Dump That. Luke, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Kenneth. Um, so start off simple, just, you know, in your own words, tell us, you know, what exactly is it that you do day to day and how did you really get into this role? Sure, I can speak to that. Uh, so I've been with, been there, dumped that, I actually just celebrated 10 years, I think yesterday. So yeah, been with the company for a long time. Uh, I started off as a, a franchise support coach and because uh, of a digital marketing background, I I transitioned over to that side of our business model and helping our franchise uh, locations implement their local digital marketing strategies. And uh, as of the last couple of years, for a number of our franchise locations, text requests has been one of those tools in our digital marketing toolbox. Well, love to hear that. Congrats on 10 years, by the way. Thank you. I've just hit or next week I will hit nine years here at text request. There you go. Okay. So we're on a similar path. Yeah. How, uh, how many locations do you all have? Yeah. So we have uh, about 200, uh, over 250 franchised territories, uh, but that's comprised of about a uh, hundred and I want to say 110 ish franchise operators. Okay, and then Obviously, so you're meaning, helping. Yeah, franchise operators have uh, multiple franchise territories. Okay, and then you're helping each of these territories market their businesses in their local markets, correct? Yeah, yep, exactly. So so walk me through that because that's a lot mm -hmm. to handle. Yeah, so uh, we have a, a team, a digital marketing team here of, of myself and a few others that uh, are, are tasked with implementing their strategy uh, from the, their website to their Google presence, to social media, to email marketing, you, you name it, uh, text communications as well. Uh, we uh, we help just onboard some of those strategies for them and manage and facilitate those strategies uh, so they can focus on other parts of their, their franchise, uh, including the financial operations and financial management, personnel management, uh, so, I mean, that's why a lot of people would invest into a franchise is because they have that team behind them that uh, is doing some of the work that might get left behind if it was all on them. And then is there a core customer that you serve across all territories or does it vary a little bit by region? We cater to the same customer type no matter what market we're in, there's two really customer types we have. We serve the homeowner, right, at the single family home. And then we also have a contractor customer. They might have a be a different type of contractor. They may be a roofing contractor, a general contractor, a, a fire and restoration contractor. But uh, we do kind of split those customer bases into residential and then the contractor customer base. But 98% of our containers are going into the driveway of a single family home. Okay. And I'm curious, especially because there are so many territories that you serve um, and marketing or in marketing, there's always another channel or another tactic or something that people want to use or say you need to use. Um, is there anything in particular that you find works really well across the board um, or maybe anything that you've tried that you can't find to work anywhere? Yeah, I, I think uh, having a strong presence on Google will catch you very far with uh with drive, especially on our residential customer base, most people are finding our services because they are going to Google to search for our, our service. And you, we have to make sure that our franchise locations are found readily on, on Google searches. Yeah. I, uh, and then what do you do to, to make sure they rank high? Is it 
reviews? Is it uh, it's review blogging. definitely reviews. We uh, invest a lot of, of time and effort into getting our franchise locations reviews, and uh, and 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 this speaks well to the the review platform that Text Request added to their service uh, a couple months ago. I want to say, uh, but also uh, we also just optimize the website to help get found on Google. Do the you know some of that local seo as well and there's the google business profiles or the google map listings that play a big part of our strategy as well so one question i want to bring up uh you all have been there done that use text request uh pretty heavily and in myriad ways it seems like so can you tell me a little bit more about that and what works yeah we have a number of of our franchise locations that have uh, employed text requests as part of their operational or, or marketing or, or both mix. And uh, across our, our franchise network, you might actually find that those franchise locations use it a little differently from location to location. Uh, we see We see that some use it more on the operational side of connecting to their customers and letting them know when they may expect a delivery or pickup or actually communicating with their their delivery experts or drivers uh, in, when they're in the field. And then we have other locations use it more of a marketing side of things, creating goodwill uh, for their brand through facilitating uh, Google reviews or reviews across the internet or marketing to some of their customers about upcoming specials or maybe uh, upcoming uh, events within the, the calendar year that their customers want may take note of. And then from our standpoint, from the home office standpoint, uh, we utilize it as a, a way to facilitate uh, customers that come into our website that are maybe looking for a local franchise and we just help them find their local franchise. And then we also will do some mass uh, marketing campaigns, some text campaigns uh, that we might you know, speak to an upcoming special we might have or an upcoming season that they may particularly want to rent a dumpster for, like uh, you know, near the end of the year when people are kind of gearing up for the holidays, trying to clear out the garage before winter comes. It's a good time to to rent one of our containers just to get rid of some of that excess trash, so you can park your car in the garage, right? And we we recently executed a campaign that spoke to that that need, and we saw a good number of leads come in through the website uh, through that campaign. We get this question a lot, so I'll ask it to you: Is how often do you send a mass text campaign or what's a good cadence for that? That's a, that's a great question. I would, so the cadence we run right now is about quarterly. Uh, we're open-minded to be a little more frequent. And I think that might be in the plans for 2024. Whereas people are, are sensitive to, to those types of um, marketing messages. Uh, and some are, are, it's really dependent on the person. Uh, I get e or text or email communications from brands I trust all the time. And I would like to think that our customers would welcome some of those messages, but you also can't spam their inboxes. So right now we're running quarterly, but uh, we're definitely open-minded to running a little more frequently in the coming years. And then ultimately there, it's it's really send it at what pace uh, works for you and for your customer right. base, right? So if yeah. quarterly is working yeah. great, then do that. We found success so far in the the few campaigns we've run. We found success in each one of those. So you'll learn the cadence, right? If you see a drop-off uh, or unsubscribes, then then you know you're maybe running a little too frequent, but if not, you you keep going um, keep going and keep doing what's working.
I want to switch gears a little bit less from uh, from customer acquisition and more about how your team functions um, and how you manage them. And so I guess what are the, um, are there core functions that your team is, is uh, in charge of like website management and let's say branding or copywriting or different things like that? Or, or what do you really choose to focus on? Yeah, I think each member of the team does have management over some part of the strategy that gets implemented. Uh, we have one member that's really in charge of the, the social media activity, another member that's in, um, in charge of the SEO part of the strategy. So I would say each member of our team has ownership of, of a core part of that strategy and um, they're accountable for that part of the strategy. Tell me a little bit more about uh, about how social media plays in into to marketing for you all. Obviously, it's a huge distribution channel for for anybody. Um, but I would think for or perhaps you can tell me for for local companies or companies with a local presence, it plays a, a larger impact trying to build a community. Is that true, or would you say differently? Uh no, I certainly the the community part of it I would abide by. Uh, from a lead gen standpoint, it, it's not uh, one of our more significant lead gen sources. I, I'd probably lean more on those on Google searches, right? On being found on, on Google searches. But we do invest into our social media uh, visibility and our networking through social media. And I think that's where we actually find the most value. Kenneth is, is, is actually networking. We can network with contractors. We can network with community organizations to really establish that community presence uh, because that's what social media should be. It's about community, right? So uh, it's just an online community rather than an offline community. And we try to make that transition from offline to online or, or vice versa. Yeah. How do you, I guess, so is your team managing um, profiles and website pages for everybody or is it more of, Hey, we've got this and we need you to push it out. Uh, sorry, we've got this and we need you, the franchisee to push this out to your, to your market. We manage the bulk of it. Uh, yeah, I would say we do most of the heavy lifting. We're managing 90 to 95% of the work and the listings. And uh, it's a, lar a large, large part of the uh, strategy and, and management is really on our shoulders. Is there anything in the, it's especially we're recording this around the new year. So this is top of mind for me. Is there anything that's, um, that's really got you excited going into this next year? Do you think, hey, this is a, a new avenue we want to to build on? Yeah, well, uh, AI is at the tip of everyone's tongue these days, and I think you have to embrace it or to get left behind. And we will explore that area extensively throughout the year uh, and making sure, and we just, you know, the one thing we've I've kind of, expressed to the team here and to colleagues is that we just want to be smarter with our marketing in 2024 and i think there's the tools at a play that help uh, that will allow us to do so is is perform uh marketing in, in a smarter capacity that seems to be the the consensus from a lot of marketing leaders i've talked to is we we don't really need help you know creating more mediocre copy or blog posts, but it's more of, you know, can you uh, help me? I don't know. Can you help me uh, improve this email campaign performance just a little bit so that I have a higher conversion Yeah, rate? and I, I'll speak to that for a second. I think where it can help really the most is is, is help us allow us to uh, actually learn about our customers more. So when you do create that email campaign or that text campaign or whatever campaign type that is, your the messages will resonate more because you understand your customers more. And I think, or I know that we're going to be utilizing 
AI technology in that capacity is to help us learn more about our customers. To that point, I have this conversation with a lot of people too, but what have you been, what do you typically do to learn more about your customers or how do you gather insights? Uh, great question. So we invest in, in tools, whether it be like text request or um, other, like some call tracking uh, tools to allow us to really go, uh, go through our customer conversations. And you can learn a lot from how, just how your customers are conversing with you, whether it be uh, through a, an audio telecommunications or through text communications. Uh, the, your customers are going to really tell you what their needs are through those communications. And you can have technology parsed through all that because take a while to go through all your texts and phone calls, but uh, AI technology can go through all that in the blink of an eye and then spit out the information that you're looking for to again, learn more about the customers and their needs and how you can communicate to their needs. And then I guess you, you all have also learned a lot from Google searches and how they, I guess, just where leads come from. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What are they searching? Uh, what, searches will lead to more clicks or more conversions yeah we uh, we have been investing in to to that side of things for a long time now as well and so we we just talked about what what we expect or what we're looking into going forward let's talk about the year in review um, was there anything that you you did or anything that you changed or updated that had a significant impact Okay, that's a great question. Uh, and, and so in tw isolating it to 2023, uh, I did I did suggest in 2024, we're going to invest more into AI technology, but I think the, I would say in 2023 is when we started to dip our toes into it. I think that's had a profound impact on how it's gonna shape marketing going forward for us. So I think I was I would say that in 2023 just getting introduced to AI te technology has been a game changer for us. Yeah, I'm I'm really I'm really curious to see how a lot of people smartly um implement AI into what they're they're already doing or maybe it opens up entirely new things for people. Yeah. You know, who who knows? Um, what's the, I, I want to talk about mistakes here for a minute. Cause I, you know, there's the old trope that you, you learn way more from, from messing up than you do from successes. And we can talk about whether, how much that's true or not, but I think it's, it's fun to, to talk about what we did learn from things we thought would work that didn't. Um, so are there any situations like that, that you can speak to where you thought a, a particular, you know strategy or tactic or market segment would work out really well. And then it turned out that wasn't the case. Yeah, we've had a few of those learning experiences in the time I've been here, at least. Uh, you know, we've made, we have made previous investments into social media, a social media lead gen. And it's just has never proven to be a tremendous lead gen source. Uh, so the one, the important thing is I, I like to, I'd like to think that I'm a pretty open-minded person. So I'm always open-minded to new ideas. Uh, but social media lead, social media lead gen just hasn't proven to be a winner for us. And then speaking of being open-minded, where do you, is there a, a go-to place or person that you'll, you'll go to, um, when you're trying to learn new things or when you just have questions about what's yeah. best? There's, there's a, a plethora of resources, especially for what I do and so much of it tied to local marketing, right? So there's blog posts and websites I subscribe to in the local marketing or local SEO landscape. Uh, we have, I have relationships with folks in that industry including a prominent uh, agency actually that's 
their founders, at, at least here in uh, Sterling Sky, Joy Hawkins is well known among that local marketing or local SEO landscape. We have relationships with that company and we rely heavily on that relationship to get an understanding of of the landscape and where things might be shifting or going into into this year or into other years so i think i would say that i rely a, a lot on those resources sure um and then we'll, we'll make this the last question uh make it a pretty easy one or at least pretty interesting for me. So I'm a big reader. A lot of people in our network are, and we see that a lot of high performers tend to, to read fairly heavily as well. Um, is there a book or two that's had a, a big impact on you or that you would particularly recommend? Uh, for, I think, for, sorry, I know for any small business owner or for anyone doing local marketing, the E-Myth Revisited is a great book for small business owners and to understand that that dynamic of how to grow a small business. That's a book I've read a number of times and was kind of passed down to from colleagues of mine here as like required reading, but with good reason because that book, I'm not entirely sure how old it is now, but it's been around for a while and I think I still think it's at the forefront of top business books. And then I guess this is actually the last question. If anybody wants to to work with with you or with been there, dump that. How do they find you? How do they reach out? Okay, interesting. Uh, so if, if anyone looking for a franchise opportunity uh, with been there, dump that. Uh, you'd want to go to been there, dump that franchise dot com. And if you look into a rented dumpster with us, you go to been there dump that usa.com or been there dump that.com for residents of Canada. All right. Well, Luke, thank you so much. Really appreciated this. Yeah. Thank you very much.